Another year, another Comic Con I couldn't go to. Luckily, the internet exists, so I have been keeping up with the news from San Diego Comic Con. I thought I would share my opinions on a few things from it, just, you know, for fun. The first thing that caught my eye was Titan's Hump by Dan Abnett. Apparently this is going to focus on an alternate universe version of the Teen Titans, being assembled because of a young precog named Lilith. This sounds like a good team and an interesting premise, and placing it in an alternate universe makes it quite easy for it to go in interesting directions, especially with Dan Abnett writing. I think Dan Abnett works best when he's writing books where he can do pretty much whatever he likes with the characters. His Guardians run worked so well because he could kill them off if he wanted to, because no one really cared what happened to Rocket Raccoon. Which is, you know, different from now. It sounds mysterious and interesting, and I'm looking forward to it. We got an announcement for an Avengers issue zero, which will feature stories from all the Avengers books coming out in October. I think this is going to be a good taster, considering all the books are written and drawn by the people who are going to be writing the main books. I definitely plan to pick this up and give it a review. Chronicle writer Max Landis is going to be writing his own Superman book soon. I'm looking forward to this. Max Landis has made it clear in the past he's a big fan of Superman. If you Google Max Landis Death of Superman, you will find probably one of the funniest videos on the internet. American Alien sounds like an interesting idea. He describes it as kind of the anti-All-Star Superman. Instead of focusing on a Superman near his death, this one will focus on a young Superman's stories. I'm definitely going to give this one a go, because I think Max Landis could tell a really good Superman story. I still want to see his version of Death and Return of Superman one day though. We're getting two new books in Earth 1, Flash, written by J. Michael Straczynski, and Aquaman. JMS has written Superman Earth 1 previously, and that was a great retelling of Superman's origin story, which bore close resemblance to Man of Steel, but was pretty much better in every way. I think he could tell a good Flash story. He's a great storyteller when given the right material. And frankly, I think Earth 1 definitely needs some more books. It has potential to be its own version of the Ultimate Universe. And we really need more trade paperback only books. Because I think it's a great format that's been underappreciated so far in comic books. A new series called Spidey has been announced, which will be an all ages Spider-Man book telling stories from a young Peter Parker's life. I think this could be fun. I don't like the name. I feel it's a bit teen boppery. But I definitely like the idea of returning to a teenage Peter Parker even though we kind of already did that of Ultimate Spider-Man and uh, he died. But if this is written well, I think it could be fun. In movie news, it's been announced that Bruce Timm is going to be directing a Batman the Killing Joke animated movie. DC's animated films are honestly brilliant, and I think they'll do the Killing Joke justice. However, I don't see it coming across in its full glory, because there are some scenes in there that I think are just too controversial to make it into an animated feature. The DC movie universe's Green Lantern movie will in fact be a Green Lantern Corpse movie. I think this is a good move. The Green Lanterns are most interesting as a sort of group. Whilst I do like Hal Jordan, I think a movie would be a great place to put the various ring colours and the wider Green Lantern Corps and Guardians of the Universe mythology. Plus, this means we might get characters like Jon Stewart, Guy Gardner and Carl Rayner. It's also been rumoured that the next Batman movie will in fact be written and directed by its star, Ben Affleck, along with Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns is a good writer. I think Ben Affleck has what it takes to make a good Batman movie. However, considering the current tone of the DC movie seems to be very dark and gray, I don't think we're going to get anything very different from Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. I would like to see a lighter take on Batman with more sci-fi elements, but I don't think that's going to happen at any time in the near future. Uh, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, I don't care for. Like I said about the Batman movie previously, this just looks like it's going to be incredibly dark, and frankly I don't care for it. Whilst there are some superhero movies I think benefit from being dark, we'll discuss Suicide Squad in a moment, I don't think Superman is one of them. Superman should be an idealistic hero. He should be someone who stands out. He could be flawed, he can be human, but I think making him a villain of his own story is just weak. I also think introducing Batman to this world with a conflict with Superman is kind of lame. I don't think there'll be much emotional stakes behind this conflict, because we haven't built up their friendship. What makes me look forward to Civil War is the fact that we've seen Steve Rogers and Tony Stark's friendship build up over the course of the movies, so tearing it apart is going to be emotional for people watching. Whereas Batman fighting Superman is just going to be a guy in a suit fighting a guy in a cape. We also got the Suicide Squad trailer, which I think is actually a good example of dark superhero films, because it looks like it has some humour to it. You can't really have a character like Harley Quinn without a bit of humour. I actually like the look of Margot Robbie's take on the character, even if I'm not a huge fan of her costume. I would have preferred something a bit closer to the original Jester look that she had from the animated series. On top of that, we got our first look at Jared Leto's Joker, which I'm iffy on. I think Jared Leto could definitely play a scary Joker, but the tattoos and the grill don't quite sell me on him. And he seems to just be channeling Heath Ledger instead of going for his own take on it. We have seen some set of photos of him wearing the suit, so I think that we might get more of that in the future. Which I would be quite happy to see. Ash vs Evil Dead looks hilarious. The Evil Dead movie trilogy is great, and Bruce Campbell is a star. 
I think giving him a TV show that is separate from the Evil Dead movies currently coming out is a great idea. It looks like it's going to be a fun ride, which is all I really want from an Evil Dead TV show. We got the trailer for Alan Tudyk's Con Man. This looks like it could be a fun show, though the trailer didn't hugely sell me on it. Some of the jokes were okay, but I felt some of them didn't quite hit. However, it's a star-studded cast, and I think they could pull something together. And finally, we got a Doctor Who Series 9 trailer. This looks like it might be the show's most cinematic entry yet. The shots included in this trailer look really good. There's some great cinematography in here. On top of that, Peter Capaldi and Jenna Coltman look really good this year. They seem very energetic, and I think that's going to be a good relationship to have in the TARDIS, especially with the promise of larger, action-oriented stories. On top of that, we're getting some great returns this year. The Zygons, who are going to be featuring in a story of Unit, look as good as they did before. When they returned in the 50th anniversary, I was very hopeful that they would be coming back again, because they're great villains, and, you know, since they're basically the Slovene, but from the classic series, I would prefer to have the Zygons. I don't think we've actually had it announced which story the Dalek story is, but the rumours are currently that it's the opening two-parter, which will apparently take place on Skara. This was actually a rumour from one of Britain's less reputable tabloids, but it seems to have some credence now. Michelle Gomez also returns as Missy, something I am very glad about. She gave a great performance last year, and I would love to see her character fleshed out a little bit now. And finally, we're left with the question of who Maisie Williams is playing. Is she a character from the past, or is she a new character? The trailer seems to hint that she's a character from the past, but I don't think they're ballsy enough to bring Susan back and not have Carol Ann Ford play her. I'll also be very disappointed if she doesn't at least make a cameo if she is Susan. The Doctor's daughter could also be an option, but I'm not a huge fan of her. Overall, I know some people didn't like Series 8 as they felt Capaldi was too harsh a Doctor, but I loved him, and I think Series 9 is going to take that to new levels. I'm really looking forward to it. I hope it doesn't disappoint. So, what did you guys think of things that came out of Comic-Con this year? Was there anything you were very excited for, or anything that you thought looked a bit meh? Why don't you leave a comment down below and tell me?